We don't want to show the love to our brothers as much as maybe uh, we should. The, the king doesn't go up to every peasant who, who screams at him. If you can't take it, don't fucking dish it out. Don't be a fucking pussy. If you're going to be in the arena of social warfare and you're going to attack other people with words and actions, fucking get ready to get hit back, bitch. You're going to have to learn through experience what is genuine insults and what's not. However, in the end, it really doesn't matter. When you're dealing with like your best friend, when you're dealing with your best <laughs> God damn it. Hey guys, Hector Castillo, Poppy from girlschase.com. Today I wanna to talk about healthy relationship communication. And this is part one, there's gonna be three parts. So the first part is social, when you're dealing with friends, mostly male friends, but female friends can apply. Uh, the second one is gonna be about family. And the third one is going to be about relationships, romantic relationships. Biggest problem with all relationships. Now, I, I think that a lot of guys are just not alpha and they're not like, you know, being dominant and especially when it comes to the romantic side, but also with the, the friendship side, a lot of the communication problems that you're having are because people just don't respect you in the first place uh, because you're not yet the best version of yourself or at least close to it because like, technically you can't ever be the best version of yourself. But when it comes to the situation at hand, because you can't change the past, obviously, it's the lack of clear, direct communication that hurts the relationships with your friends, with your family, and with your romantic relationships. We tend to keep things inside, and then we tend to hide from that confrontation of telling someone that we don't like something they did, or there's gonna be a positive side to this, and we'll get to that, is that you don't reinforce the positive by communicating positive things with other people. And if you were to become much more brave uh, and courageous in your willingness to express when you don't like something, and then also the open-heartedness to express when you do like things, when you don't have that communication, you have a vagueness to your relationships. But when you do have the courage to express these feelings, whether negative or positive, in a mature, calm, open way, you are going to have a much more healthy relationship because the terms of the relationships, just like the you know terms of service or conditions of a contract, they are clear. And when things are unclear, there's a lot of miscommunication because both parties aren't aware of how the dynamic works. Now, there is a certain complexity to this, especially when you're dealing with social situations because there are hierarchies in your social circles. Uh, you may be at the top of your social circle, but you may not be. And having healthy relationship communication is going to increase your rank because most people are not willing to express their discomfort at mistreatment from maybe those at their peer level or their superiors, whether it's at work or even in their social groups when you have guys who are maybe cooler than you or more experienced than you or whatever. And it's going to make you higher value, but there is that complexity of how do you communicate specifically with uh, someone who is a peer versus someone who is lower than you or versus some or with someone who is higher than you. And the complexity of, of that is a little bit outside the scope of this video. I'm just gonna give you a general outline. If you want a very in-depth uh, guide and outline to communication with your peers relative to your social value situation with them, then I would suggest you check out King of College. It's a book that I wrote years ago and it's available in the description below. And it outlines my journey in college through learning social circle game, how to get friends, how to maintain those friendships, uh, how to grow your value in different friend groups, how to get into different types of groups, maybe groups that you're not so familiar with, uh, that are kind of outside of maybe your skill level or your comfort level. And then also ultimately how to get girls from those social groups and then actually super ultimately become the king of those social circles, hence the name King of College. Now you would think that it's a book only for college, but no, that's just the environment which I learned my lessons in. The lessons applied and the principles in that book regarding how you communicate with people in your social groups, they're universal. And so they're gonna apply to whether you're in high school, you're in college, 
or you're a professional in your 30s, or if you're in a fucking nursing home, you're still gonna have the same types of communications and the same types of uh, power relations and social relations involved in those circles. So if you learn how to swim in one circle and you learn the principles of how that little pond works, you're going to learn the mechanisms of water in general. So you're gonna learn how to swim in any type of pool or lake or river or ocean. So it applies for any type of demographic, any age, anytime you're dealing with people, you're gonna have to deal with socializing and with power. And I explain the dynamics and principles of those social groups and of those power dynamics in the social groups in my book, King of College. So for a much more thorough explanation, check out the description below. Now, as a general outline, you are gonna have negative communication, which doesn't necessarily mean like, hey, fuck you. I mean, dealing with negative situations. And you're gonna have to deal with, of course, Positive. So the first, negative. This is the one that most people are struggling with, uh, but that most people are afraid of. Whereas the positive stuff, people just aren't even aware of how to communicate that in a healthy way, especially between men, because we're afraid of coming off gay or, or too sensitive and too emotional. And we don't, we don't wanna show the love to our brothers as much as maybe uh, we should. But the first is the negative where people are just afraid to do it because they're afraid of the uh, getting, getting beat down and getting told, you know, stay in your place and stay in your, on, on your level in the totem pole. So negative disrespect, uh, negative social communication, disrespect, uh, um, cold behavior, uh, aloof behavior, uh, insulting behavior, status jockeying, or even aggressive behavior where a guy is way too, uh, he's attempting to be dominant over you. He'll start talking to the girl that you're, you know, you were talking to and he'll, he'll wave his status around. Like I said, the complexities of where the power dynamics work is, is maybe beyond the scope of this video, but we're just gonna take it at face value no matter who they are. They could be the coolest guy in your group or they could be the worst guy in your group. So when someone is being disrespectful to you, the first solution that I would give to when you receive something negative from someone, whether it's a passive aggressive comment uh, or, or, well, if it's passive aggressive, then I would suggest you just ignore it at first. That's the first sign. Someone says something negative, you just go, yeah, whatever. There are some niche circumstances where you do need to address it, especially maybe when there's a girl around, you don't wanna show her that uh, you just allow people to talk bad to you. Uh, but sometimes it, can, it shows that you're very powerful when you just, okay, whatever peasant, like, you know. The, the king doesn't go up to every peasant who, who screams at him, right? He would be embroiled in fucking one-on-one -on -one battles for the rest of his life. What the fuck did you say to me? What the fuck did you say to me? It is important that you stand up for yourself. So this is where a lot of people get it wrong. They take that, oh, I just ignore it comment and they apply it to everything everywhere because I need to show that I, I don't have thin skin and I'm not afraid of anyone's insults. But there's a certain point where you're just allowing everyone to fucking abuse you. And so the reason why I give it as a first strategy is because it might just give them the the communication of don't do that. And you don't necessarily just have to ignore them, like completely ignore them. It could be just you give them a look, right? Let's say you're a friend of mine and you say something kind of, I don't know, catty. And I just look at you like, that's very powerful. That's kind of like, watch your shit, right? You don't have to say anything. It's just boom. And they're going to feel that, okay? Uh, and so the first go-to move is ignore or give some sort of subtle nonverbal communication. Like you start to give them less attention that day or, or for the next five minutes until they fix their act. And then once they start to act better, then you allow them back into your fold, into your kingdom, right? Into your good graces. If this escalates or if it continues to be a pattern, what I would suggest that you do is that you take them aside at some point and you talk to them uh, if it's in the moment and it's becoming aggressive, then you need to address it even if it if it's in front of everyone. If they make it a public battle, you might need to make it a public battle. So at first, if it says some smart, a guy in your class makes a smart ass comment, right? Look at him, whatever, man. You can even say that, you just be like, yeah, whatever. You, so ignoring can be a nonverbal look or it can just be a quick comment like, whatever, dude, or just shut the fuck up. It can be a <laughs> dismissal. If that doesn't work, and he continues to have that behavior, maybe it's the next day, it doesn't have to be that time, you know, or a week later, two weeks later, if it's persisting. Then what you should do is if it's not too egregious and he's not really fucking going all out and trying to put you down, I would let the situation calm down, 
you know, keep talking to whoever you're talking or just let the awkward silence, don't be afraid of those awkward silences, let it ride. Then later in the evening or later that time that you guys are together, when maybe people are distracted, get up to like go to the bathroom and then like tap him on the shoulder and be like, hey, come here, I need to talk to you. Take him to the side, somewhere private, uh, because when you involve other people and you make something public, you are going to rile up their ego because they're going to have to defend you. Because they attacked you and then you attack back, they have to fucking stand their ground. Or if they, they allow their attack to be thwarted, then they lose testosterone. So they went, they tried to, you know, if you're going to kill, the, go for the king, you better kill him, right? So they went for it. You're like, fuck off. And he's like, mm. his testosterone is going to drop and he's going to feel defeated. And unfortunately, sometimes this is going to make him actually, it's going to embolden him. And he's going to be like, are right, you fighting back? All right, I got to fight back now. And I've seen this happen on all spectrums, guys who are higher value than me in the social circle, equal or even lower. They don't want to be seen getting beat, even though they were the one who poked you first. It's a, it's a very universal uh, behavior, especially from toxic, low value people, even people who are high in the status, who are still just low value in reality. They'll fucking go after you and attack you. And you see that a lot in a lot of social situations in the world right now, where people will attack others and then they'll play the victim once they're attacking you and they're like, oh, I'm a victim, you're, you're bullying me. And it's like, dude, you were the one to come at me first. Or a girl, you were the one to fucking come at me first. If you can't dish it out, or if you can't take it, don't fucking dish it out. Don't be a fucking pussy. If you're gonna be in the arena of social warfare and you're gonna attack other people with words and actions, fucking get ready to get hit back, bitch, okay? So avoid the public arena situation of everyone in the in the room, because like, we're all monkeys deep down. We're all gonna be like, oh, they're arguing, it's a fight, you know? It makes us uncomfortable, but we also like it. Why do people watch UFC? Why did people watch the gladiatorial games in the Coliseums? Because we're fucking monkeys, that's why, okay? And we like violence. So avoid that public situation that's gonna get them to maybe go further than they would have originally, and you and you blow up something that didn't need to be blown up. Take them privately, uh, or you can text them if you really can't find a time to talk to them, but it kind of looks a little bit more pussy if you do over a text. And you take them to the side, you talk to them, and you say, hey man, you know, I, I gotta tell you, I really didn't appreciate what you did earlier. Now, the most important thing is that you stick to your guns. When you're gonna deal with particularly malicious, manipulative, or even sociopathic and psychopathic people, which are rare, but they do exist, and they're probably in your social circles, you definitely know a sociopath in your life, 100%. They are going to, or even someone who's not a sociopath, but they're very manipulative and they play this whole like bully, but then victim back and forth bullshit game, where they're gonna be like, oh, I didn't mean anything by that, did I? You're gonna have to learn through experience what is genuine insults and what's not. However, in the end, it really doesn't matter. If someone, if you felt insulted by something, there was something about that they did that was not acceptable. Even if they didn't tend to be insulting, if you still felt insulted, you should still say something. Right? If you took the time to maybe play the whole ignore thing, but if they continue to do it, all right, now you need to address it. Hey, I didn't appreciate what you did earlier. Oh man, I didn't mean it. I understand you didn't mean anything by it. All you need to do, you don't need to demand an apology because that might, again, rile up his ego. He's like, what are you making me submit? That's what he's feeling. Just say, I didn't appreciate the way that you communicated with me. You kind of made an asshole joke and I didn't really appreciate that. Now, if you have a certain relation with him, like you guys don't know each other that well, be like, hey man, you know, maybe you were joking, but we're not cool like that. Like, I think you're a nice guy. It was nice to meet you. We've been hanging out occasionally or I just met you, but we're not cool like that. So uh, I, I'm not cool with you talking to me like that, we're not, we're not there yet, okay? Or if you know him, be like, look man, we're friends, and so I expect you to take it seriously that I don't appreciate the way that you're communicating with me. Now, if he continues to be like, oh, I didn't mean anything, da, 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 maybe let him get away with it once, but then if that behavior continues, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut him off. Now, ideally, you should have the power to cut anyone off. I don't care if they're the coolest guy in the world, you love hanging around them, they're funny, they're, they're, they have high social status, they're rich, they're, they're good with girls, so you like to learn from him and go out and party with him. I don't give a shit what he gives to your life. Ideally, if you are a 10 in your mind, you should be willing to throw anyone to the fucking streets where they belong. You shouldn't do it, you shouldn't press that nuke button right away uh, once you're high value enough, you can pretty much press it whenever you want because you don't care. You don't need anyone for anything. You're self-sufficient and you know that you can go out and meet other friends and, and create new social circles. I've burned down so many social circles, sometimes because of my stupid behavior and a lot of times because of their stupid behavior. Uh, and I talk about this in the, in the college book, uh, but you need to be ideally unafraid to cut off anyone. But you should kind of keep that as a last resort. 
after you've attempted to talk to them this way a few times and they just don't seem to get the fucking picture. People make mistakes and people do get distracted by pussy a lot of times, but you shouldn't be friends who, with guys who, who get really distracted by pussy and mistreat their friends for the sake of possibly getting pussy by you know acting like they're the cool guy. Or especially when you're dealing with money. This is why dealing with money and girls with friends is really, really complicated and I would avoid it in most uh, circumstances. Uh, but when you're dealing with things that are of value to them, they can sometimes get blinded by their desires and treat mistreat people around them. Uh, but you need to not be so forgiving. I've been a very forgiving person in my life and it's been to my benefit in a lot of ways because I've learned a lot of compassion and empathy and I've learned how to extend olive branches and come to understandings even when I felt all the desire in the world to fucking knock the shit out of them. But after I've had those experiences, when I learned how to be diplomatic, I kind of came to the conclusion that actually it's better to err on the side of fuck you rather than allowing people to continue to abuse you emotionally and socially. And so be prepared to always press that button, but give them the chance, explain yourself to them. If it happens every so few months, okay, you know, you gotta, you have to come up with your own lines of disrespect. Uh, and mine are very small nowadays because I just don't need that many people. Uh, and so that's your own journey and your own experience that you have to figure out. But so start off ignoring, then escalate and be like, hey, you know, I need to talk to you. Be very calm about it, but be firm and make sure don't let them turn it around on you because very manipulative, high IQ people, especially sociopaths, are very, very good at manipulating you. And they'll say sorry now and then they'll just wait a few months and do it later once they usually forget their strategy with you. And so you need to kind of keep a tally in your head of how people are acting around you. Uh, and you're going to go through phases where you're too uh, misunderstanding and you're too uh, forgiving and you're going to learn some balance. Like I said, it's your journey. But ignore, address, and then at some point, if it gets too much, just fucking cut them off. Now, if they really go after you in a social situation, like they're fucking grilling you. I mean, to some extent, men just talk shit with each other. So I don't want you to think that every time a guy's talking shit to you, um, this is where the power dynamics come in because, you know, you let your peers talk shit to you, but maybe not your inferiors and you maybe need to be a little bit not submissive to your superiors because no man should be your superior, but sometimes inevitably that's going to happen. You know, you're not the fucking God of the world yet. You have to earn your place, right? And you're going to need to learn how to take shit and give it back and have fun. I mean, there has to be some sort of, there's some sort of manly, like we like to wrestle and fight kind of energy that men have, but there's a limit to it and you need to find your own limits. Uh, but if someone's doing something socially in front of other people, you do also need to know how to do it in front of other people. Now, the problem with this is, is that your emotions are going to get riled up. So you can be calm when in a private room, but also your monkey fucking animal primal instincts are going to come in and you're like, oh, fuck it. Try to stay calm. Now, if someone escalates, be prepared to escalate with them and go as far as, you know, it's legal or, you know, you're willing to go. I uh, would not recommend fighting people or doing anything illegal, but be prepared to emotionally escalate with them. And, but at the end of the day, you have that nuke button to press and it's the ultimate solvent for anything. Just fuck off. I'm done with this people or this social circle or this particular person. Uh, and you'll learn your strategies of how to maybe kick them out of the group because you like everyone else. You just don't like them. You learn how not poison everyone against them, but kind of show everyone their behavior because you know that they're toxic and they're bad. Uh, but that's again, very complex. And I go more into it in my uh, college book, but that's the step-by-step -step process to deal with negative relationship communication. And that's the stuff most people are afraid to do because they're afraid of looking thin skinned, especially with guys. We're afraid to look offended. Don't be afraid to be offended. It's a, it's a trick that people do to manipulate you into letting them abuse you. They say they spit in your face and they say, why are you so thin skinned? Let me spit in your face. That's how you need to see it. You're like, no, don't spit in my face. I'll stick my fucking dick in your mouth, bitch. Okay. So positive. This one's more positive. So <laughs> when you have a friend who is cool, uh, when you enjoy spending time with them, let them know that you like them. When you're talking to them, be sweet, be kind. Don't be afraid to be a little bit, not homoerotic, but I mean a little bit like, hey buddy, hey, I miss you, I love you, I care about you. If you're dealing with guys who are not, I know some guys who maybe were like younger than me and they didn't learn how to like be emotional and then I opened them up. You know, I kind of white knighted for them. I was like, man, you don't have to be so fucking, you know, I, I slowly was warm to them and they were like really tough, 
but they liked me. They never like insulted me, but they were kind of tougher. And then eventually, like I remember one friend, he finally said, I love you to me. And I was like, oh, he finally opened up. He's such a, cause he's such a like a mofo, you know? He really started to let his guard down. And, and, and I knew why he had his guard up. I didn't blame him for it. He'd been hurt in the past. Uh, but he eventually let his guard down and learned how to be emotional and sweet with his friends. And so I suggest that you be that kind of guy. And you can be as emotional as you want. Some guys are just not that emotional. I'm not saying if you're, if you don't feel like, I wanna say I love you, bro, you know, stroke his dick every time that you, oh, if you wanna learn how to suck your best friend's dick, check out the description below, I have a video. <laughs> it's an April Fool's video, but it's still funny, check it out. Uh, so you don't have to be more emotional than you truly are. If you're not the kind of guy who just expresses himself like that, but, when you're dealing with like your best friend, when you're dealing with your best <laughs> God damn it, I really didn't mean to. And I was just like, oh fuck, okay. <laughs> I'll teach you the, what do we call it? The Whammo Blammo 3.05. Yeah, it's constantly being updated. I think I'll have a new patch coming out soon. <laughs> uh, when you're dealing with like your closest friends, I've seen the most manly motherfuckers. You're like, I appreciate you, bro. I love you, man. And they'll hug you and they'll, they'll really open up. Like, we're human beings, okay? Don't pretend you're some fucking emotionless robot. Unless you are, right? Uh, in that case, you probably need to get tested for ASPD. But, um, so yeah, so don't be afraid to be positive with your friends because what that's gonna do is it's gonna grow the happiness and the positivity and it's gonna offset a lot of negativity that could have grown because you're fostering wholesome states of consciousness within yourself and them, and it's creating this beautiful union, and it'll counteract any time that maybe a negativity arises in them. There's so much positivity, it just squashes the negativity. So you not only need to fight the negative, but you need to grow the wholesome stuff and the positive shit and the beautiful gardens so that the weeds get drowned out. Make sense? Cool. And then always remember that you have the cutoff point. You have that new button, because in the end, you're alone. It's just you, you're gonna die alone, you're gonna go through this journey alone in this life and possibly in the next lives for all eternity uh, until you finish the game. Uh, but you are alone and because you're alone, you are the only island that you can uh, take refuge in and you are the only person you can ultimately rely on. So don't be afraid to cut people off. I promise you, I promise you, you can always find cooler, better people in, in different parts of the world, different parts of your group, different parts of the city, anywhere. Just be ready and willing to cut out the negativity in your life and maybe you'll spend some time being alone and there's nothing wrong with that. I think every man should spend a lot of time alone uh, to grow his own strength and become his own refuge. Uh, but there are gonna be good virtuous friends out there and by getting rid of the weeds, you're gonna allow the flowers to grow. So don't be afraid to cut bitches off. Hector Castillo, Poppy from girlschase.com. Hope you enjoy the video on communicating in a healthy way, in a mature way, in an open way. And this is really, sh people really respect when you can communicate this way. It's, it's something that you don't really see often. And like I said, when you start to communicate this way with people, everyone's gonna notice. They're gonna be like, all right, this guy's a real deal. Like he's got some real shit going on because he's not being aggressive and like fucking dominant. I gotta be awful over, over everyone but you're being alpha in a real way and you're being decisive and strong, but kind and understanding and compassionate. And you're gonna see that your status is gonna shoot up. So like, subscribe, ring the bell, follow me on Instagram and stay tuned for the next two parts of this series. The next one is gonna be how to uh, communicate healthily with your family. And then the third one is gonna be how to deal with your relationships, your romantic relationships and your women and keeping them in line. And uh, remember to check out uh, <laughs> remember to check out my King of College book in the description below. It'll teach you all of these principles and so much more. And you give me money and that'll be a very healthy relationship communication with me and show me that you love me and you appreciate all of the advice that I give you on YouTube and help me, you know, stay fed and, you know, not fucking become a homeless person. Okay. I love you. Bye. Going around. Healthy relationship communication. Communication, <laughs> basically, you gotta learn how to speak correctly first. I swear to God, it's a meme that I can't fucking speak.